This is the GTN Show, welcome. Now I've got a question for you. Are we starting to see the emergence of the super triathlete? Those athletes that can race at the very top level in one type of triathlon and then transform directly to the next. Well, we're gonna be discussing that as well as looking at super athletes from the sport of running as well because we've just seen a huge world record broken in running and another very serious one that's getting planned. Yeah, we've on top of that got all the results from a jam-packed weekend of World Championship racing too. We have of course got all of your pictures to share and a new caption competition, plus the exciting news of some giveaway winners to announce. just seen an incredible weekend of racing at the World Triathlon Series Grand Final in Lausanne, Switzerland. We also included the ITU World Championships, the Para Triathlon World Championships, and of course the Sprint and Olympic Age Group World Championships. Yeah, now all of these performances across the board were equally impressive, but there is a few athletes that have caught our eye because it's the prospect of them going on to compete in another World Championship event only a week later that has got us questioning, are we actually seeing perhaps something like the rise of a super athlete? Now, what we're referring to here is there is a handful, three actually, of the elite I2 athletes who are going on to swap their road bikes out to replace them rather with their time trial bikes and head down to Nice in the south of France to take on the World Ironman 70.3 champs. Now here at GTN we talk about the A race and sometimes you might be able to fit another A race or at least another big race into your season, usually a few months apart, not just one week apart and in a completely different style of racing. Well Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden from Norway and Javier Gomez of Spain are doing just that and they have just raced incredibly well on the weekend. It was Christian Blumenfeld who finished first, Gustav Eden fourth and Javier Gomez sixth as well as coming third in the overall series and now they have just a week to recover and refocus ahead of the Ironman 70.3 World Champs in Nice. Now that being said, if Christian Blumenfeld does race this weekend, which he more than likely will, he has just won the grand final and he is also the current world record holder for the 70.3 distance, so I can't really imagine he feels that he's jeopardised too much. Well, I mean, with this situation, do you think the athletes will have had to prioritise and choose one race over the other? And if so, how and, and what's going to be the hardest part of that, that transfer from one race to the other? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I do think they will have prioritised what's come first because first and foremost, they're federation athletes and they're all trying to go to the Olympic Games next year. So the grand final is a really big part in that process. So yeah. the training that leads into the grand final is what will have been their main priority. But that lends itself to half Ironman training because the amount of training that these athletes do to race very well at short course racing is significant. So that amount of volume, swim, bike and run actually, is all going to carry them perfectly well through the half Ironman. The main difference I suppose is the equipment and the fact that they're not used to riding their TT bikes and they probably won't have been on them too much. But they're going to have at least this week to get back on them a little bit and I don't really imagine that's going to phase them too much. But I mean you're saying about the order of it and interestingly it has been the two world championships, so the ITU Grand Final um, and the 70.3 Ironman World Champs have been the other way around and actually we've seen um, Javier Gomez have great success when he was double world champion back in 2014 but it was 2017 where he became world champion at the Ironman 70.3 in Chattanooga and there was going from America over to Europe to Rotterdam just one week later and he raced the um, grand final there and still managed to finish fourth in that race so that just kind of proves that some athletes can do it both Yeah ways. that's a really good point the fact that that was a difference in the race um, um, positioning then wasn't it? But I think Javier Gomez is a bit of an exception from what we've seen so far we've obviously seen Alistair Brownlee race both and be very successful at one and then the other but not in the same year. So that leads us on to a question for this week's GTM poll and we want to know whether you guys think one of the athletes that's doubling up, so hopefully that will be Christian Blumenfeld or Gustav Eden or Javier Gomez to win the Ironman 70.3 Worlds on this coming weekend. Well to vote on that just click in the link up here. Now that takes us to our question from last week's poll where we asked you do you want to see pros racing alongside the age groupers and we had a fairly unanimous split here in so much as 33% of you said yes you would like to see that happening but the remaining 67% said no we don't think that's a very good idea. Well it did open up a decent debate we've got a message here from Daniel Ricky says better question should certain age groups be racing at the pro level when they finish a full Ironman of sub nine hours? 
Yeah, or 8.45, because the age groupers seem to be getting even quicker these days, <laughs> don't they? And um, next one was from Nikki, hashtag zero K, who said, it would be pretty cool if last year's age group winners were, who were within 30 minutes or 60 minutes, perhaps, he's suggesting, um, after the first pro coming in from the previous year's race. So I see what you're saying there. If there's like a band of time that athletes fall within, then maybe they should be promoted to pro. Yeah, um, perhaps having the pro win and pro men leaving at the same time. This comes in from Troy Stein, and he goes on to then say, it's the pros' livelihood, so mixing amateurs in the mix is high risk, and the pros have earned the right to have their categorized waves start. So if you've got the um, ability to race with the pros, then go and get your pro license. Well, it's now time to announce our winners from the giveaway of the Park Tool AK4 Mechanic Toolkit. Yeah, so we're delighted to announce three winners here. We have Henrik Christensen, another in Daniel Sykes, and a final winner is Josh Evans. So congratulations to you three. So now moving on to our try news, and it is that time of year with the traditional calendar, I suppose, winding up, but the short course Super League events start to kick in. And we have the very first event of that upcoming season kicking in at the Jersey event. And with that, we have some wildcard announcements. Yeah, there's been 10 wildcards announced, including big names such as Vicky Holland, the former ITU world champion, Christian Blumenfeld, who's obviously just come off the back of a win, along with Gustav Eden, um, Georgia Taylor-Brown and Sophie Coldwell will be two more Brits joining the lineup. Matt Hauser, Martin Van Riel as well. Then we've got um, Emily Morier, who's just won the Under-23 World Championship. So pretty stacked lineup. They're going to be joining a team of actual 50 athletes. There's going to be 25 men, 25 women who will be on that start line at the end of the month. So having talked just there about short course triathlon, we're gonna now go all the way to the other end of the endurance sports spectrum in terms of long distance running because we've just had an incredible record broken by Zach Bittner in Milwaukee in the US because he has finally broken his own national American 100 mile record by smashing that and the world record as well with an astonishing time of 11 hours, 19 minutes and 13 seconds for that mark. Yeah, well he broke the record by 10 minutes and then that wasn't quite enough though because he thought, well, it's only 40 minutes away from getting another world record, and that is the 12-hour record. So he managed another 4.8 miles, making 104.8 to get the new world record for the furthest distance run in 12 hours. Yeah, which is quite astonishing. And the thing that I find almost most notable about this is the fact that he did it in an average pace of six minutes, 48 seconds per mile, which, it's a pretty fast pace for one mile, but when you're wrapping yeah. that together for a hundred of those miles, it's yeah, incredible. You can't get your head around it. And he did it on a track of 443 meters long because it was around the outside of an ice ring. So a little bit different there, but Zach says he really hopes that from this achievement that he's gonna open up you know, the world and actually get people looking at ultra running and attracting more top athletes because he thinks that soon we'll see the 11 hour broken as well. Now, considering how significant a record that Zach has just broken is, that leads us on to another very, very significant running record that is gonna be attempted in the near future because we're getting ever closer to the Ineos 159 challenge, which is gonna involve Elliot Kipchoge attempting to break that elusive two-hour barrier, one that was deemed impossible for so long, and who knows, maybe it still is, but that is going to be happening on October the 12th. Well, yes, we're getting ever so closer into the last 40 days now, and they've just been running a test out in Vienna, the city that's going to be hosting the event, running through all the logistics. There's a team of 150 behind this record, and they've got the pacemakers out there actually checking that they're on pace and everything's good, because they do have to run two minutes 50 per K or 4.34 per mile. So it's Amazing. kind of, even for those who are just doing 5K and they're swapping them in and out, it's gonna be quite a challenge for those guys. Well, elliot has been back at home uh, training and really focusing purely on that when they've had the logistics team down. The date is going to be flexible because they need to make sure that the weather conditions are ideal. So certainly getting ever so close and we could see another very exciting and significant challenge broken soon. So opening up race news, we have got the Lausanne ITU Grand Final, which was the culmination of the whole series of the ITU event to crown the world champion. So we had the men's race first and there was a lot at stake for in particular Vincent Louis who was going in as the series leader and he had to finish in the top five to guarantee himself that spot. Now he came into the grand final as having won that event in the previous two years. So he's got great pedigree and form coming into the grand final. However, that being said, this year he only had to come fifth and that is actually where he ended up coming. And back tracking a little bit to actually go into the detail of the race, we had essentially a very big pack leading out onto the bike, which 
basically culminated in a running race with Christian Blumenfeld, effectively running away from all of that big group of athletes to produce an outstanding result, really, because he's been a little bit off the radar this whole season. Took a fantastic win, 20 seconds clear of Mario Mola, who's in second place, and then another Spaniard, Fernando Alarza, coming in for the final podium position in third. Well, the women's race, it was Katie Zafares who was the series leader by a considerable margin. I'm not actually sure what she had to finish, but it didn't matter because she ended up dominating the race again. And on the women's side, it, it was a breakaway pack with Flora Duffy, no surprises there. Katie Zafares, Jess Learmonth, and Georgia Taylor Brown. There was a couple of others who dropped off as the bike went on, but the catching group never managed to really close that gap. It was Nicholas Spirig who kept trying to make the effort to close the gap. She had three Italians with her, I think who all finished top 10, but just weren't quite putting in maybe as much you know, work as she had hoped. So the race really was between that front group. And when it got onto the run, it soon actually materialized that Flora, she is just back after you know, a year and a bit out of racing and she just quite hasn't quite got those run legs yet. So she dropped off the pace. And then it was a race between those three. So Zafares, Georgia Taylor-Brown and Jess Learmoth. And the three of them were the leading three in the series. So you know, that was kind of pretty cool as it turned out. And it actually ended up being the final result was the same as the overall series. So Katie Zafares took the win and the series winner. Then it was Jess Learmonth who, after an incredibly strong run, finished second and second overall. And Georgia Taylor-Brown rounding out the podium for third on both the overall series and the race itself. And in terms of the series for the men's, we finally had an overall win for Vincent Louis from France. We had Mario Mola, last year's champion, finishing in second place and a well-deserved third place for Javier Gomez from Spain. Also in Nissan, it was the Para Triathlon World Championships, and there were quite a few categories, so we're just going to cover the winners for this. So starting off with the PTVI, the winner in the men's race was Hector Catala from Spain, and the women's race was the reigning world champion Susana Rodriguez of Spain as well. And moving on to the PTWC category, we had Yet Platz from Holland as the winner, and we had Lauren Parker as the female winner from Australia. And then in the PTS2, the winner of the men's race was Jules Ribstein of France, and it was Fran Brown of Great Britain in the women's race. Moving on to PTS3, we had Daniel Molina from Spain taking the men's victory and Elise Mark from France, the female victory. And then the PTS4, the men's race, was won by Alexis Hanquin Quant from France, and it was Hannah Moore from Great Britain who won the women's race. Yeah, and the final category was PTS5, and the male winner was Canadian Stefan Daniel, and the female winner was Great Britain's Claire Cashmore. Now, moving over to Ironman 70.3 racing, there was just one solitary event this weekend, which was in Zellum C, former host to the World 70.3 Champs, actually, in 2015. In the men's race, we had a hometown victory for young Austrian athlete Thomas Steger. We had second place going to German Frederick Funk, and also from Germany on the podium, we had Florian Angert. And the women's race was won by Daniela Blemhull. Second place went to Els Visser, and in third, it was Lisa Hautala. There's some more racing with Xterra. They've still got a while to go till their World Championships, and it was a race in Luxembourg this weekend. The women's side was won by Helena Urbanova of Czech Republic. It was Elise Parties of France who was second, and third place went to Elizabeth Orchard from New Zealand. Yet, yeah, and on the men's side of racing, we had Belgian athlete Uri Luxem taking the victory from perennial winner on these races, Arthur Serriers from France, and third place went to German athlete Jens Roth. Now, it wasn't just the triathlon that had a World Championship event this weekend. We had the Otolo event over on the archipelago just outside of Stockholm. Some fantastic racing happening there. And in the men's result, we have first team being Team ATG in a very fast time of well below sub eight hours, which is extremely quick over there. Seven hours, 47 minutes, 48 seconds. And that was Pontus Lindbergh and George Balcomo. Well, the women's race was won by Team Envol, consisting of Fanny Dankfort and Desiree Anderson. And they also have a mixed category too and that was won by Team Garmin in a time of 8 hours and 38, so still very quick, and that was Charlotte Erickson and Simon Bjorsen. It's now time to have a look at the photos you guys have sent in, and we've got another wonderful selection, starting off with this one from Rustam, and we're back to Russia, this picture in the Red Square Moscow of his Trek domain. Apparently it was a nice easy coffee ride. Doesn't look very busy, does it, for the city centre? I'm assuming that the, I've never been having never been to Moscow. Just assumed that there would be lots of people around. But yeah, I don't actually recognise the angle. There's some barriers, so maybe there was an event going on. Or maybe it was just really early in the morning. Who knows? But it's a beautiful yeah, picture. It is. Next up, we've got Luke, who sent in this picture of a Planet X Aero road bike, and it's from the Pembroke Junior Triathlon, which is it was first triathlon indeed. But he's just got trainers and a normal helmet there. But fast forward to his 15th triathlon. Now we're into clips. We've got flying mounts happening, an aero helmet, which yeah. is great news. 
But we'd love to see an updated picture as well then, Luke. So do send that one in and we'll see if we can share it. Our next photo comes from Adrian and this is from Roundwood, County Wicklow in Ireland, just ahead of the Dunleary 70.3. Well, it's by uh, practicing on the course, so I presume he was about to race. Yeah, so let us know how you got on in the race because obviously that's been and gone by now, but it looks absolutely stunning, that bike course there. And the bike, Fraser, we need to have a quick look at that. <laughs> we do actually forget. I mean, it's a lovely yeah. backdrop, but it's also a very nice bike. And yeah, you know, no, we've I mean, ridden plenty of Cervelos here in the past. Well, the P3 that I was lucky enough to ride here was very comfortable. I loved it. And I, mine had a little bit of the green, but this is an updated version with um, some new um, colorways on there. So yeah, very um, matching to the scenery. Yeah, well, now we're heading indoors. This one comes from Lucas. And Fraser, you'll be pleased to know we've got another <laughs> trek on here. Yeah, it's come all the way from Aruba and which, um, um, well, what I notice straight away here is the fact that they're using um, an altitude mask and simulating yeah. being altitude, which is very serious stuff. Indeed, yeah, I wonder it? if it's for a specific race or you're just trying to get the altitude benefits. Yeah, interesting, let us know. Who knows? And our final one has actually been sent in from Australia and it's from an open water swimming group. So Sutton Swim Group based in Redcliffe, Australia. And apparently down the road from where they train, there's a bay that's seven and a half kilometers wide. And they decided after nine months of planning, six crew um, wow. got in the water with kayakers to do the swim. Um, and it sounds like it was such a success that they're gonna make it an annual event. And we've even been invited for so, um, <laughs> well, that's... I think we are most certainly game. Love to. If you could just sort out our plane tickets, yeah, then easy. We'll be there. But anyway, if you guys have seen this and want to share your photos, where well, you can do so by using the uploader, and the link is just on the screen now. Now it's that time of the show where we've got our caption competition. Now we've had many good entries, but we've selected them down here, and it is from a picture that was from the World Cup in Czech Republic at the Carl of the Vary event. Yeah, our first one comes from Ian Jones. Who needs a cardboard straw? Yeah, good. Now, this one has been quite some time since I read Harry Potter books, but I'll give this a try. It is Wingardium Livosia. Liviosa. But that was sent in by Pipes W. <laughs> our next one, our final one up from Amir Nagaria says, Look, Ma, an aero bottle. But our winner this week is from Henry Masters, who says, Tears, swimming fingernail paddles grant you extra feel and control of the water, regardless of the discipline. I like that. Well, we well go. done, Henry. You're going to be getting one of these GTN caps, so just make sure you get in touch with us. And for you guys who want a chance to win a GTN cap, well, here is this week's caption competition photo from the ITU Grand Final. Where's everybody else? I don't know. Maybe Practice, they were maybe. already gone in. I'm not sure. It's a bit left you guys tell us what you think. Well, that is it for another action-packed GTN show. We've had plenty of chat about racing, and that's going to continue because the IMA 70.3 Worlds are just around the corner. And if you want to see a preview on that, well, keep an eye on the channel because we're going to be having a video coming out very soon. And if you're lucky enough to actually be out in Nice, well, keep an eye out for us at GTN because we're going to be there on the ground. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this week's show, so give us a thumbs up like if you have. And to make sure you get that video and plenty more, just click on the globe to subscribe. Yeah, and don't forget that we do have a shop here at GTN. There's all sorts in there, bike gear, some running gear, lots of new colours of swim caps too, so get involved there if you want to look a little bit like us in our videos. Now, on that final note, we have got some superb videos at the moment, including the Norse Man video, which I was lucky to be a part of. So if you want to see that video in full, you can see that here. And if you want to see one of our first of the new series of How to Swim Front Crawl, well that can be found just down here.